Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're tackling something uh, pretty universal, sticking to our goals. Mm. It's hard, right? Like you start with this burst of energy yeah. and then life happens and suddenly you haven't been to the gym in three months. I know. In That's fact, it's so easy to fall off track. One of the sources we have, a study from the University of Scranton, found that only 8% of people actually achieve their New Year's resolutions. 8%, wow. Ouch, right. But don't worry, you've sent us a ton of great material for this deep dive. We've got blogs, YouTube videos, articles. Yeah, I've got a really good mix of stuff. So we're gonna dive deep and figure out how to beat those odds together. What I think is interesting is that we often get so caught up in the HOW mm -hmm. of goals, you know, the steps and the strategies. Right. But in this deep dive, we're also going to explore the WHY. Yeah. Like, why are we setting these goals in the first place? What makes certain approaches more effective? Love that. And why do we sometimes stumble, even with the best intentions? Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of goal setting. Yeah. Let's start with the foundation. Yeah. Why are goals even important? Well. Besides, you know, the whole achieving our dreams thing. Right, of course. Yeah. One of our sources, Action for Happiness, talked about how goals give us a sense of purpose. Like, it's not just about checking things off a list. Yeah. It's about feeling like you're moving in a direction right. that matters to you. And I think yeah. when you have a clear goal, it's like each day feels a little more intentional. Yes. You're not just drifting along. Totally. It's like having a roadmap instead of just wandering aimlessly. Exactly. But it's what about where you're going? What about those inevitable setbacks? Oh, yeah. You all hit them and they can be so discouraging. They can be. Yeah. And this is where a concept from one of the articles really resonated with me. Healthy embarrassment. Healthy embarrassment. Okay. Yeah. So instead of like getting bogged down in shame when you slip up, you know we all do. Of course. It's about acknowledging it, learning from it, and moving on. I like that. So it's yeah. like, okay, I eat that entire bag of chips. Yeah. But I'm not going to spiral. Right. Tomorrow's a new day and I'll make a healthier choice. I love that. It takes the pressure off, allows for, you know, being human. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so we've got the why down. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the how. Mm -hmm. A couple of sources, Ticket Personnelli and Committee W on LinkedIn, both had some great advice about setting ourselves up for success from the start. Oh, they did, yeah. Yeah. They both really emphasize the importance of setting realistic goals. Yes. I mean, we've all been there, right? Aiming for the moon, then crashing back down to earth because it was just too much too soon. Too much, yeah. So it's about finding that sweet spot, you know, where it's challenging but still achievable. And speaking of achievable, a bunch of the sources like Take It Personnel, A, Community W, and even WikiHow, all talked about breaking down those big goals into smaller steps. Yeah. Way less intimidating. Right. Absolutely. It's like climbing a mountain. You wouldn't try to scale it in one leap. Or one giant leap. You'd break it down into manageable stages, right? Focusing on each step as you go. And plus, those small wins along the way, they give you that sense of progress. Right. Keep you motivated. And, you know, speaking of motivation. Yeah. I was surprised to see that even Brendan Burchard like the high performance guru. Yeah, yeah. Was on board with a really simple but powerful strategy. What's that? Write down your goals and share them with a friend. I know, it seems almost too basic, right? I know. But there's something about making that commitment public. Yeah. Even to just one person. Makes you accountable. It adds a layer of accountability. You know? Totally, like, it's like you're less likely to hit the snooze button if you know your workout buddy's waiting for you at the gym. Right. Exactly. And on that note, take it personally. And Lily Cameron's YouTube video both talked about the power of having a support system in general. They did. Yeah. Lily even used this great analogy of a plant needing good soil to thrive, right? Like if we surround ourselves with people who are negative or don't support our aspirations, right. it's going to be so much harder to grow. It's like that saying, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, precisely. Right. So we've set a realistic goal, we've broken it down, written it down, shared it with a friend. <laughs> We're killing it. Are we ready to launch? Wait, hold on. Where yeah. does motivation fit into all of this? Oh, good question. Yeah, I thought motivation was the key. You know, that feeling of excitement, inspiration. The fuel. It gets you going. I know. Yeah. Well, a few of the sources, like James Clear in his blog and an article from Psychology Today, 
they actually bust the myth of relying solely on motivation. What? No. Yeah. Really? It's fickle. It comes and goes. Wait, are you saying motivation isn't important? It's definitely part of the equation. Oh, okay. But the real secret sauce is habit formation. Okay, interesting. So how do we build those habits, especially when, you know, life gets crazy? Yeah. Well, James Clear comes in clutch again right. with his if-then technique. If-then, okay. It's all about anticipating obstacles and planning for them. Okay. So let's say your goal is to work out three times a week. Instead of just saying, I'll go to the gym, you'd say, if I have to work late on Tuesday, then I'll squeeze in a workout during my lunch break. I like that. You know? It's like being proactive. It's about taking control. Yeah. Not letting circumstances derail you. Love that. Setting yourself up for success no matter what life throws your way. Exactly. Okay, but how long does it actually take to form a habit? Ooh, good question. We've all heard that 21 day read. Right, yeah. But is it true? No, the ACCA article we have actually cites research saying it's closer to 66 days on average. 66 days. Mm-hmm. And they even warn against those trendy 30-day challenges. Oh, so those quick fixes aren't really setting us up for long-term change. Exactly. It's about playing the long game. Okay. And speaking of the long game, let's talk about visualization. Ooh, visualization. Brendan Burchard is a big proponent of that. He is, yeah. He had some great examples in his blog, right? He did, like, the marathon runner visualizing not just crossing the finish line, mm -hmm. but also pushing through those tough miles or the writer picturing the feeling of holding their published book in their hands. Ooh, I love that. It's about connecting emotionally to that outcome and using that to fuel your actions. It's power. It's like creating a mental movie of your success. Yes. But how do we actually put this into practice? Well, Bertrand suggests a technique called weekly scoring. Weekly scoring, okay. So you take some time each week to reflect on your progress and give yourself a score, you know, from one to 10 based on how well you stuck to your plan. Okay. And this ties in nicely with journaling, something WikiHow also recommends. Mm -hmm. It's about checking in with yourself, making adjustments as needed. It's like having a weekly meeting with your goals, making sure you're both on the same page. Exactly. Right. What about when you get so focused on the end goal? that you get discouraged if things don't go perfectly. That's such a good point, and it's something Gretchen Rubin addresses in the ACCA article. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She emphasizes the importance of focusing on actions rather than just outcomes. Oh, interesting. It's about finding satisfaction in the journey, not just the destination. So it's like, enjoy the process, not just chasing the result. Exactly. And the ACCA article also highlighted Malika Chopra's concept of micro-intents. Micro-intents, okay. So these are tiny, actionable steps mm -hmm. that focus on the process. Okay. So for example, instead of saying, I'll lose 10 pounds, a micro-intent would be, today I'll swap my usual soda for a glass of water. Okay, I like that. It makes it manageable. Right. So we've got realistic goals, small steps, a support system, we're focused on the journey, not just the destination. We're doing good. What else do we need to know to really nail this whole goal getting thing? Well, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Oh. Or maybe it's more like a swarm of buzzing mosquitoes. What is it? Distraction. Oh, tell me about it. They're everywhere. We live in a world of constant notifications and pings. It's like our attention spans are under attack. Yeah. The Take It Personally article was pretty clear. Multitasking is not your friend. It really. Trying to do too many things at once actually divides our attention and makes us less effective. Interesting. And remember Lily Cameron's YouTube video? Yeah, yeah. She talked about being mindful of our media consumption and how it impacts our goals. Absolutely. She even suggested doing a media cleanse every now and then, like just to hit the reset button. Right. Make sure what we're consuming aligns with what we want to achieve. So it's about being intentional with your time and attention. Exactly. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about setting ourselves up for success, navigating challenges, even battling distractions. And this is just the beginning, right? Oh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to explore. A absolutely, we've laid a great foundation. Yeah. But now we're gonna delve into the psychological side of goal pursuit. Ooh, this is getting good. We'll look at how to deal with setbacks, maintain momentum, Stay motivated even when it feels tough. Yes. Plus, we'll touch on something really fascinating. The social aspect 
of goal getting. Oh, I'm so ready for this. Me too. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. So we talked about setting the stage, creating a solid plan to reach your goals. Yeah. But let's be real. Yeah. It's rarely a straight shot to the finish line. Not usually now. You're going to hit bumps along the way. Oh, for sure. Those bumps can feel like mountains sometimes. Oh, yeah. How do we deal with those setbacks right. without completely losing steam? Well, one of our sources, the Zen Habits blog, Okay. they really hit the nail on the head with this one. What do they say? They said that every worthwhile goal, uh -huh. it's going to have obstacles. Right. It's almost like they're built into the process. Okay. So the key is not to let them derail you completely. So it's almost like expecting the unexpected. Exactly. If you can anticipate that there will be challenges, right. you'll be mentally prepared when they pop up. Makes sense. And remember that if-then technique from James Clear we talked about earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can be really helpful here too. Right. Planning for those what-if moments so you're not caught off guard. Exactly. Okay. But let's say you do hit a snag. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your motivation from tanking? That's a good question. Yeah. And the Zen Habits article, they had some great advice for this. Oh, good. They said, go back to basics. Back to basics, okay. Why did you set this goal in the first place? Mm -hmm. What were you hoping to achieve? Sometimes reconnecting with that initial spark yeah. can really reignite your motivation. It's like reminding yourself of the bigger picture, right? Exactly. The why behind all the effort. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, there will be times when even revisiting your why, yeah, it's not enough. Right. And you know what? That's okay. Oh. Remember we talk about how fickle motivation can be? Right, yeah. It comes and goes. It's not something you can just conjure up on demand. So what do you do when you just aren't feeling it? That's where the power of habits comes in. Okay. Remember, the ACCA article said it takes, on average, what, 66 days to form a habit? 66 days, yeah. It's about pushing through even when you don't feel like it. Yeah. Because eventually those actions, they become automatic. So like showing up consistently even when you aren't super inspired. Yes. That's what eventually builds that habit. You got it. Okay. It's discipline, consistency, even when it's tough. Got it. Consistency is key. Mm -hmm. But what about when you are putting in the work, but you're still not seeing the results you want? Oh, yeah. How do you deal with that frustration? Ooh, that's a tough one. Right. Well, that's where Gretchen Rubin's advice is so helpful. Okay. Remember how she emphasized focusing on actions rather than outcomes? Right, yeah. Finding satisfaction in the process itself, yeah. not just the end goal. Right. Enjoy the journey, not obsess over the destination. Exactly. But how do you actually do that? Well, remember we talked about rewards. Yes. Result. I can be a game changer. Okay. Celebrate those small wins along the way. Right. Give yourself a little mini high five exactly. for each step. You deserve it. But sometimes it feels like even when you're doing all the right things, yeah. there are like a million things trying to pull you off track. I know. Distractions are a real struggle. They are. And in today's world, they're everywhere. Yeah. Remember what the Take It Personality article said about multitasking? Uh-huh. It's a myth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Trying to juggle too many things at once, mm -hmm. it actually makes us less productive. Wow. Okay. And Lily Cameron on YouTube, she talked about being mindful of what we're consuming. Right. Like, is this actually serving me? Yeah. Or is it just a distraction? Right, right. She even suggested doing... A media cleanse every now and then. Oh, interesting. Just like hitting the refresh button on your brain. Making sure the content you're taking in aligns with your goals. So it's all about being intentional with your time and attention. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked about setting the stage, tackling those bumps on the road, battling the distractions. Yeah, we're doing good. But there's another layer to goal getting. There is. That we haven't even touched on yet, and it's a big one. It is. Okay, I'm all ears. It's the social aspect of achieving our goals. Oh, interesting. We tend to think of goal setting as this solo endeavor, but it turns out mm. the people and environments around us yeah. play a bigger role than we might realize. Now that is interesting. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah, it's a really important piece of the puzzle. Tell me more. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about the social side of goal getting. I'm really curious about this. I've never really thought about it before. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? We often think of goals as this, you know, individual pursuit. Right, like it's all on you. Yeah, exactly. But we're not islands. 
The people and environments around us, they actually have a huge impact on our success. So how do our social connections influence you know, our ability to actually stick to these goals? Well, think about it. We're constantly picking up cues from the people around us, right? Right. One of the articles from CNBC even talked about how the mere presence of others can boost our motivation. Really? Yeah, even if they're not physically there with us. They even suggested keeping like a photo of someone supportive on your desk, just as a visual reminder. Oh, that's a good idea. It's like having a cheerleader in your corner, even when you're working solo. Exactly. And speaking of support, the Take It Personality article highlighted the power of mentorship. Mentorship, okay. Having someone who's been there, done that, can provide just invaluable guidance. You know, I've always thought of mentors as being like super formal, like you have to apply to some program or something, but it could really be anyone who inspires you, right? Absolutely. It could be a friend, a family member, even someone you admire from afar. Yeah. The key is having someone who believes in you and can offer support and advice based on their own experiences. So it's really about surrounding yourself with people who uplift you and challenge you to grow. Precisely. And you know, that ties into something Lily Cameron talked about in her YouTube video, the importance of aligning yourself with people who share similar values and aspirations. Mm -hmm. She even used the analogy of a plant needing the right soil to thrive. Right, if you're surrounded by negativity or people who don't support your goals, it's gonna be so much harder to flourish. Exactly, and it's not about cutting people out of your life. Right. But it is about being mindful of the energy you allow into your space. That's a good point, yeah. Okay, so we've talked about our inner circle being important, but what about those like bigger cultural influences? How do those play into our goal setting journey? Think about all the messages we're bombarded with every day. Oh, I know, it's overwhelming. Right, through advertising, social media, the news, these messages can really shape our perceptions of what's possible, what's desirable, even what's considered successful. So it's about being aware of those external influences yeah. and making sure they actually align with your own values and goals. Exactly. It requires a critical eye and the ability to kind of filter out the noise and focus on what truly matters to you. Wow, we've covered so much ground today. We have. We went from the basics of setting realistic goals, forming habits, the importance of visualization, support systems, and now this whole social aspect. It's like a whole new world of goal getting has opened up. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? It is, it is. But you know, knowledge is only powerful if you use it right. Absolutely. The key takeaway here is to take action. Choose one thing from this deep dive and start implementing it today. That's great advice. And remember, even small steps can lead to big changes. And if you stumble, don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Just hit that reset button and start fresh. After all, every day is a new opportunity to move closer to your goals. Love that. Progress over perfection. So here's a final thought to ponder as you embark on your goal-getting journey. If every day is a fresh start, how can you use these strategies not just for those big ambitious goals, but also for those everyday choices that shape your life? Something to think about. And that's a wrap on this deep dive from Podcast B. Until next time, 